Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a simple rotor disk in OpenFoam. Uh, the rotor disk consists of a layer of cells that uh, utilize a blade element momentum theory model to and uh, empirical input such as lift coefficient and drag coefficient over a range of angles of attack to compute forces and enact that and uh, enact those forces on the surrounding uh, typical Navier Stokes uh, Navier Stokes solved medium. So I'll just go ahead and show you a video of the results of this case. This is an axisymmetric domain, so it's just a one layer, one wedge layer of cells, making for fast, uh, fast simulation time. And you can see it develop. It took some time to develop, um, and uh, this actually converged with uh, with the settings I've specified in the system FV solution. And uh, you can see we have, you know, what, what we'd expect, this uh, sort of updraft at the tip and then um, a high-speed stream around, uh, around the uh, outer, outer region and then a contraction of this stream tube down here um, as, as the flow returns to atmospheric pressure. And, uh, and, but this is something I did not expect, this little recirculation region here, uh, which is, it might be due to um, sort of malformed input, or I should say poorly designed, because you can also specify the twist um, of the airfoil, of, of the wing, or propeller, I should say. And uh, I just chose them arbitrarily, so I might have chosen a bad twist arrangement that causes this sort of recirculation which looks like you know it might be a source of inefficiency uh, but anyways uh, let's get to the case files so as usual we have the case files contain all the open foam configuration simulation files the clean uh, script which is for your convenience to start over uh, and cleans up all generated uh, files uh, the mesh is our um, mesh written in gmesh uh, this readme uh, gives you some details on how to so this this uh, case actually requires some modification um, from the base open foam source code um, and the only modification is outputting the the power uh, consumed by the rotor blade and um, uh, so and this run script basically runs everything for you after you've gone through the com compilation steps in the readme. Um, I don't have a simple like uh, compilation script because it requires uh, root access to make these changes and uh, it's kind of difficult to get that running in a script. Um, and, uh, and this is the source, the new source files that we uh, that we will replace with the original uh, open foam source code. Um, it's a very small addition, as I said, it's, you're just adding out power output. Um, so it, just additional post-processing to the uh, logs. Um, all right, so let's, let's take a look at the mesh. Uh, it's a very simple mesh. Uh, it's a square domain. We've got an inlet at the top going through. The side is a uh, wall, wall basically, um, and uh, we've got inf we've specified some free stream inflow coming down in from the top, and it's a wedge for an axisymmetric simulation. And this is just a single layer of cells. Uh, so um, the the propeller acts through sort of like a uh, body force, a volume force uh, that we can specify, and uh, so that that's why you need a um, layer of cells rather than just a simple baffle. Uh, so let's take a look at the generated mesh. It's a simple, very simple, unstructured mesh um, <coughs> that gets a little finer, finest at the tip, and uh, simple one layer structured mesh on the inner region here. So this this is actually a region of cells, not just a cutout, as you can see. Um, 
So let, let's take a look at how at the actual script. So we have the basic geometric. Uh, th this parameter is actually not required. You can delete that if you want. Uh, we have the basic geometric uh, parameters, meshing parameters, and uh, simple line surface lines and surface uh, uh, specification. And what's different from my typical tutorials is the the specification of a second physical volume this rotating zone so that that's the actual propeller zone uh, through which the force uh, of the propellers is modeled all right and so um, now let's take a look at what it takes to uh, compile the changes so specifically the change that's needed is to um, is to just simply put the power in the output. The default, the default is for some reason they only put out the blade drag, the sort of the uh, total blade drag. Um, but if you just you can't use that alone to get the force because you sort of lost the um, information of where each of the force each of the forces were computed. So you need the force as well as the local. Uh, uh, local propeller speed in order to compute the power. So we have to make a small modification and to do that you just follow these steps right here. Okay, so this um, so before we do that let, let's just take a look at uh, what is actually different. So I've, I've in, in, the sort, in the SRC folder I've kept uh, both the new modified source and the original, at least what was original on my computer. And you can see there's just three lines different. We, we keep track of a power efficiency uh, parameter and we just add it on as we go through the blade elements. Um, and we print it out at, at the printout interval. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And so, okay, so let's let's go ahead and get through with it. So you'll need um, root access. So this is me copying over the uh, the source new fold uh, the new source file to the directory where all this open foam source code is as uh, um, kept which is foam source which is an alias for wherever the source code is is on your computer fe option sources derived rotor disk source and this rotor disk source templates file <coughs> sorry entered in the wrong password okay now it's copied and now you need uh, root privileges to compile the rest so let's uh, let's copy. Let's go to the FE options folder. Now let's do wmake. Uh, note that we're not recompiling all of the open so open foam source code. We're just compiling the the smallest part that we need to, which in this case happens to be within the FV options folder. All right, now we can exit from our sudo-s command, and now we're back to where we were. And uh, now we can run. So just do the run script, mesh, and it's all running. Uh, <coughs> it's all running fine. Um, this, this, this case, unlike the others, uh, runs actually fairly quickly. Um, it'll be done here pretty soon. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So here you can see the the our changes before this line was not here, but uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, before this line was not here. Uh, and what you see is we have this and it's kind of difficult to tell how we can derive the drag from from just this one value um, since we need the information at every 
element, you know, the, and, and we need to know how far it is away from the center. Um, so yeah, we have this power in watts, basically, and the lift in newtons. And you can quickly compute the um, uh, lift efficiency or in terms of uh, force per power uh, by just dividing these two. And this is like about 16 pounds per horsepower, uh, somewhere around there, which is pretty reasonable for an efficient uh, propeller. So how did we um, specify what our propeller was? And that's all in the FV op system, FV options folder. Okay, so this is the name of the uh, region here. And uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. And so we have our disk, and we have uh, it's a type rotor disk on. And this is the name of the cell, the cell zone that we specified in GMesh, rotating zone. <coughs> So the selection mode is a cell zone, and we are specifying the cell zone name here. Um, <clears throat> and so we can specify all sorts of things. Um, we apply the source. Uh, this is a velocity source term. Uh, we can specify the number of blades, the tip effect, which is the cutoff where we just, to account for tip effects, uh, we, we just say that the lift is zero beyond a certain uh, normalized point and we can specify the RPM here the density <clears throat> and yeah there's there's all these other things that you don't really need to that weren't really relevant in this case um, so here here's where the actual propeller geometry is specified this this in sequence um, de specifies the twist um, profile so here we have, at position zero, we have uh, zero angle, and uh, let's see, um, actually, I actually forgot what this third number was, but I believe this is the um, the the distance from the root to the uh, and I, I don't think it's normalized I think it's at the actual distance as you've specified in your mesh the distance from the root that this profile starts and this is the angle ah oh, yes I remember now this is the chord I believe yeah the chord the chord uh, so you can specify taper and twist so this is the angle at this point and this is the chord at this point, at this point. And so it just does a linear interpolation of all, between all of the points you specify. So here I have like um, at the center, this there's zero twist and zero chord. But here at uh, about 0 0.0762, which is I think uh, looks like a third of the rotor, uh, assuming this is the tip, which I, I think this is the tip. Uh, this is like a third of the way there. We have a high pitch and um, 25 degree pitch and a 0.038 meter cord. And at the tip, we have a 5 degree pitch and a 0.0125 meter cord. So we see that it uh, gets wider at about one third and then tapers off uh, towards the tip. And this is the actual. Um, airfoil data. So th this describes the twist and taper, and this is the airfoil data. So I've just put in kind of, I think I modeled this after the NACA 0012, and for extreme angles I've just put like a CD of 1 and a 0 lift. So the maximum appears to be here like a negative 8 or 18 is symmetric. So 18 is a, has a 0.21 drag coefficient and a 1.45 uh, uh, lift coefficient. And at zero angle of attack we have 0.02 drag coefficient and zero lift uh, coefficient. So that's all it takes to specify your uh, propeller. Um, 
yeah, so I believe that's all there is to it. Um, yeah, we can take a look at the results again. Um, one, one peculiarity when viewing the post-process results is that you should view the cell, cell data rather than the point interpolated data because uh, when you're doing magnitude it's fine but when you're doing the z direction um, you can see that uh, the, the the differences oh let's see the differences are quite severe between the point interpolation data I think the point interpolation is uh, kind of messing up because this is only a one layer uh, wedge um, so, so you, you want to use the, um, uh, the cell, cell based data because it, it appropriately colors the direction. So here we have, uh, we could see that the tip here is like in the negative region, which means this tip is basically coming at us. It's spinning in the direction such that if we were to look at it from the side, it, it would be coming at us. So, but if you if you do the point interpolated data, well, it happens to be the same in this case. Um, but uh, in my next video, we'll see a coaxial rotor where we have them spinning in opposite directions. And again, this specifying opposite spinning but same thrust direction requires uh, a code change again. Um, but we can see in the coaxial coaxial case that uh, both rotors will have the same direction uh, if you look at it in the point interpolated uh, view but if you look at it in the uh, cell cell view cell based view uh, they'll have opposite they'll have opposite colors red and blue which, which is the correct which is the correct interpretation uh, in, a, in the coaxial case they should be spinning opposite one should be coming at you out of the screen and the other should be going into the screen um, so I'll, I'll show that uh, disparity on my next video with coaxial rotors. But uh, for the single rotor case, um, this is good for uh, just exploring um, sort of what happens if you, you know, put a twist or taper. It gives you very quick results. Um, uh, yeah, and it, it's certainly a good, like, first order estimate. Um, um, so... Yeah, that's all there is to this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comment sections. Uh, thank you for watching.